Okay, now turn for the section 2 that is more than one answer is correct starting with question number 51. A rectangular sheet of fixed perimeter with sides having their lengths in the ratio 8 is to 15 is converted into an open rectangular box by folding after removing squares of equal area from all four corners. If the total area of the removed squares is 100, the resulting box has maximum volume. Then the length of the sides of the rectangular sheet are, this is what we have to find out. Correct. Let us draw the rectangular sheet first and remove four squares. Let us say the four squares removed from four corners are like this. x each correct let us consider the ratio which is 8 is to 15 right let us say a by 8 equals 15 by b by 15 is equal to say lambda so sides can be considered as 15 lambda and 8 lambda total correct now the what question says these four corners are removed then fold up these sides like this Correct. Now, these are folded up and the volume of this rectangular box is maximum. What will be the volume of the rectangular box? V equals, this is 15 minus 2x, 15 lambda minus 2x into 8 lambda minus 2x into x. Correct. This can be simplified as we can simply multiply, we get 4x cube minus 30 16 so it is 46 lambda x square plus 120 lambda square x let us differentiate this equation in order to maximize dv by dx is 12 x square minus 92 lambda x plus 120 lambda square is equal to 0 at at which point it is given to me that the sum of these four areas is 100. It is x means x square is the area. So, what I actually have is 4x square is equal to 100 means x comes out as 5. So, at x equals 5. Correct. So, this is equal to 0 at x equals 5. Substitute x equals 5. That will fetch a, an equation in terms of lambda. What we get? Let us rewrite it. It is actually 60 lambda square. Correct. We can divide by 2 minus 46 lambda x. In place of x, we put here 5, 230 lambda plus 6 x square that is 150 is equal to 0. 1 0 can be cancelled out we are left with 6 lambda square minus 23 lambda plus 15 is equal to 0 can be factorized as 18 and 5 so we get actually 6 lambda square minus 18 lambda minus 5 lambda plus 15 is equal to 0 lambda is equal to 3 or factors are lambda minus 3 and 6 lambda minus 5 is equal to 0. When we put lambda is equal to 3, we obtain the sides as 45 and 24 from the given options. Correct. That is 45 and 24. So, the correct answers we obtain after putting lambda is equal to 3. 45 and 24, these are the lengths of sides. So, correct answer, it is A and C. Fine. Let us move to question number 52. Okay, let us talk about question number 52. Let Sn equals summation over k from 1 to 4n minus 1 raised to the power k into k plus 1 upon 2 multiplied with k square. Then Sn can take value or values from these four options we have to select. Let us try to give some values to k as 1, 2, 3, etc. When I substitute a k equals 1, we observe 
1 into 2 upon 2 that is 1. So, it is minus 1 square. When I substitute k is equal to 2, I get minus 2 square. k is equal to 3. 3 will give me 3 into 4 upon 2 that becomes even power. So, it is plus 3 square and so on. So, we are trying to set a pattern by giving certain values to k. So, let us rewrite it minus 1 square minus 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square minus 5 square minus 6 square plus 7 square etc up to 4 n terms. Correct. So, we observe that if we take it in pair 3 square minus 1 square 4 square minus 2 square can be simplified easily. So, it is 3 square minus 1 square 4 square minus 2 square etc up to 4 n terms again twice of what it gives me 3 plus 1 4 plus 2 we can simplify by saying factors are 2 into 4 2 into 6 and so on or what I am doing 2 is taken common 3 plus 1 4 plus 2 6 plus and so on up to still 4 n terms are there. So, simply I have to find sum of 4 n natural numbers we get the result 4 n into 4 n plus 1 form. Correct we get 4 n into 4 n plus 1 form from the given options we have to select the correct answer now 4 n into 4 n plus 1 when we look at the first option 1056 it can be converted to the form of 32 into 33 correct 32 into 33 it is in the form of 4 n and 4 n plus 1 product 1 0 double 8 we are not in a position to change it in the same form similarly the third option could not be converted we have to go with the options in this case so we find 1 3 3 2 is 36 into 37 so in this manner these two are the correct options that is a and d so correct answers are a and D. Correct. Let us go to the next question that is question number 53. Okay, let us consider the next question, question number 53. A line L passing through the origin is perpendicular to the two lines L1 3 plus t into i cap plus minus 1 plus 2 t into j cap plus 4 plus 2 t into k cap where t is between minus infinity to plus infinity and L 2 3 plus 2 s into i cap plus 3 plus 2 s into j cap plus 2 plus s into k cap s is also between minus infinity to plus infinity. Then the coordinate or coordinates of the points on the align L 2 at a distance of root 17 from the point of intersection of L and L 1 is R. It is quite lengthy one. I repeat a line L is passing through origin and is perpendicular to L 1 and L 2. So, we can find the direction ratios of the line L by taking the cross product of ratios of L 1 and L 2. So, let us start by finding direction ratios of L direction ratios of L can be obtained simply by I J K correct line 1 that is L 1 the direction ratios to known to me are 1 2 2 for second it is 2 2 1 correct. So, let us write it 1 2 2 2 2 1 simplifying we see it as 2 minus 4 that is minus 2 i cap minus j times 1 minus 4 that is plus 3 j cap minus 2 k cap. So, we can say direction ratios of L as minus 2 3 minus 2. We can also read these direction ratios as 2 minus 3 and 2 hardly matters. Therefore, L is x by minus 2, y by 3, z by minus 2, let us say lambda. 
Now, what says the next part of question? Line L is perpendicular to these two lines and is passing through origin. That's clear. The coordinate of the point on L2. Let's consider a general point on the line L2 as 3 plus 2s, comma 3 plus 2s, comma 2 plus s. At a distance of root 17 from the point of intersection of L and L1. So I need to solve the two lines L and L1. L1 the general point we can say 3 plus t minus 1 plus 2t 4 plus 2t. So we can find the value of lambda or t or both by comparing as 3 plus 2 3 plus t is equal to minus 2 lambda correct similarly minus 1 plus 2 t is equal to 3 lambda we can solve the two on solving we simply get lambda as minus 1 substitute the value of lambda minus 1 to the point we have considered so the point of intersection is minus 3 2 now the question says the distance of this point from a general point on line l2 that is 3 plus 2s 3 plus 2s 2 plus s this is given to me root 17 means i can say 2 minus 3 plus 2s whole square plus minus 3 minus 3 plus 2s whole square plus 2 minus third term that is 2 plus s whole square is equal to 17 solving this equation we will simply get the value of s substitute that value of s back to the point taken that is 3 plus 2s 3 plus 2s and 2 plus s solving we get s equals minus 2 and minus 10 by 9 put the values of s as minus 2 and minus 10 by 9 in the point 3 plus 2s 3 plus 2s and 2 plus s to get the correct answers as minus 1 minus 1 0 and 7 by 9 7 by 9 8 by 9 so in this manner we obtain the correct answers are b and d correct let's go to next that is question number 54 let's talk about question number 54 let fx equals x sin pi x where x is greater than 0 then for all natural numbers n f dash x vanishes at which of the following intervals this is what we have to conclude about intervals are in the form n to n plus half n plus half to n plus 1 n to n plus 1 whether one solution or two solutions for f dash x fx is x sin pi x we have to talk about derivative of it so let's find out f dash x first f dash x is equal to sin pi x plus pi x cos pi x is equal to 0 fine let's take this pi x cos pi x on the other side we can rewrite it as pi x is equal to minus 10 pi x we have to find the solution for this equation we can draw the curve for pi x we can draw the curve for 10 pi x and therefore for minus 10 pi x let's trace it x is positive when we talk about the curve of 10 x it goes this way 10 pi x it will go in this manner for 0 to half minus 10 pi x means it will go in this manner correct and the line we can say pi x is like this right for 10 pi x we know the curve is like this one correct so we can clearly see it will move in this manner 
and so on. This is half, this is 1, this is 3 by 2 and so on. Correct. So, we can clearly see there is exactly one solution in the interval half to 1 and so on. There is exactly one solution in the interval 0 to 1 and so on means there is exactly one solution in the interval n plus half to n plus 1 and exactly one solution in the interval of n to n plus 1 for one particular value of n. For different n, we can get different unique solutions in the given intervals. So, correct answers are B and C. Fine. Okay, let us move to question number 55 now. For 3 by 3 matrices M and N, which of the following statement or statements is are not correct? Four statements are given. I have to justify which of the following is or are not correct. First, NT MN is symmetric or skew symmetric according as M is symmetric or skew symmetric. Whether a matrix is symmetric or skew symmetric, how we convert it, how we check this thing, we simply take the transpose. When we take the transpose of it, we observe, yes, this is correct, it will come out as NT, MT, N. If M is symmetric, it will remain symmetric. If M is skew symmetric, it will remain skew symmetric. So, this statement is correct. The question is about not correct. So, it is not my answer. Next. Mn minus Nm is skew symmetric or symmetric. Take the transpose. That gives you simply Mn minus Nm whole transpose comes out as minus of Mn minus Nm. That is well known to us. So, this statement is also correct that it is skew symmetric for all symmetric matrices M and N. Third, Mn is symmetric for all symmetric matrices M and N. Sorry, we cannot conclude it. Why? Because it is not given to me whether M and N commute. If it is not mentioned, I am not in a position to judge whether this will be symmetric for all. So, this is not correct. Means it is one of my answers. Next, adjoint of M, adjoint of N is equal to adjoint of M N for all invertible matrices M and N. Okay, this is well known property. Adjoint of M N is simply distributive in the following the reversal law that is adjoint n into adjoint m. So, option 4 is also not correct. So, it is my next answer. So, my options are c and d. Let us go for the next that is question number 56.